want to welcome you for our second day session at the Holy Week Revival 2019. Let's begin with prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you that this is the day that you have made and we will rejoice and we will be glad in it. We thank you that your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. I thank you, Heavenly Father, by your spirit for any questions regarding prayer being answered this week. We thank you for insight and understanding into your word. And we thank you, Heavenly Father, for us stepping into all the blessings you have for us between now and the end of this year. And we give you the praise and the credit and the glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. If you would, you can go ahead and turn in your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 11 and also Mark chapter 11. I want to briefly review the points from yesterday, just in case somebody wasn't here or missed. Number one, we learned yesterday that our prayer lives should produce much good fruit. There ought to be evidence in our lives and in our prayer lives. There ought to be good fruit, and if there's not good fruit, that's a sign we've missed it. We've not understood something, and we've got to go back to the drawing board and figure out from the Word of God what we're doing incorrectly. Number two, we learn that a successful prayer life is always built on the Word of God. It is always built on God's Word. Number three, we learn that we are to pray the Word of God. We are to say what God says. We are to say the same thing God says. We are to say what the Word of God says. And I mentioned humility yesterday. We'll get to deal with more on humility toward the end of the week, but humility is something that we need in our culture today. There are people for shots and against shots, but everybody could use a shot of humility. And so we just got to get off our high horse and reach the conclusion, the right conclusion, that whatever we're praying for, regardless of what it is we're praying for, the best way to pray, the best thing to say is what God's Word says. And then we ended yesterday with number four, pray in the light of the new covenant. Pray in the light of the new covenant. And if you're new and haven't heard much of the series, The Finished Work of Christ, I would encourage you to get on the app and start working your way through that series. Now today, I, I had today all prepared, ready to go, and revised, tweaked, and I was praying this morning and the Lord gave me a point to add. And so the first half of today is fresh, hot, off the wire. And when that happens, typically it's because someone or many people need to hear this. Number five, when you pray, be specific. When you pray, be specific. You might say, Austin, how specific? As specific as you can be. Specific, specific, specific. One reason people don't get their prayers answered is they are not specific when they pray. When you pray, be specific. Hebrews 11 and verse 1 in the King James says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. And you've got to, everybody comes from different backgrounds. If you grew up with a religious background or a denominational background where you were taught or led to believe things are wrong, you got to jettison that. God is a good God. And there's nothing wrong with things as long as things don't have you and have your heart. Things are for our enjoyment and our use. And so it says in Hebrews 11, verse 1, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Faith is the substance. Faith is made up of the specific things you hope for and desire. So in your life, what specific things are you hoping for? In your life, what specific things are you believing for? You might say, there's young men here, well, Austin, I'm believing for a wife. What kind of wife? Like a wife that is loving and kind and generous and an encouragement or someone that's a pain in the backside? What kind of wife? I'm believing for a job. What, what kind of job? 
Do you want to be working outside in Texas in August? Is that the kind of job you're believing God for? See, we've got to be specific when we pray. Mark eleven twenty four, 24, the King James, Therefore I say unto you, what things? So Mark, in your Bible, underline things. If you've got the NIV or something else, you write this in the margins. What things? Soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. What things? Soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. So why don't we say that? Say, what things? So ever I desire, when I pray, if I believe that I receive them, I shall have them. Say this, say, God wants me to have the things that I desire. He does. He does. And like I said, if you come from a religious or denominational background, you might have to renew your mind to the Word of God. A few months ago, after one of the Sunday morning services, a young man walked up to me and he asked me to be in agreement with him for a car. He needed a car for school. And he, he said, I want you to pray with me and be in agreement. I want you to pray the prayer of agreement. We learned yesterday that's one of the types of prayer, the prayer of agreement. So before I prayed, I asked him, well, what kind of car do you want? I mean, how can we be in agreement and how can we be pray the prayer of agreement if we're not in agreement? See, he might be believing God for just a 15-year-old used car, whereas I might pray and have in mind a brand new car. Because in life, we're all at a different place. We're all at a different place in our walk with God. And so I asked this young man, I just assumed he would be able to tell me right away what kind of car he wanted. And he, he looked at me like he hadn't even thought about it. Uh, just a car, any car, really, any car will do. So you would be fine with the 1970s pink Volkswagen bug that some hippie had owned and went to concerts and did drugs and has had 55 different dogs in that car over the last 30 years. You'd be okay with if the Lord blessed you with that. No, no, no. Well, what are we going to pray about? What are we going to be in agreement about? And this is a reason why prayers go unanswered. Bless me with the husband. Well, young ladies, what kind of husband do you want? Do you want lurch? You want some guy that's not going to perform as well as your father? See, you've got to be specific when you pray. Here's an example from the Lord's Prayer in Matthew 6. Jesus said, taught them to pray, and that was under the Old Covenant. Don't have time to deal with that right now. Give us this day our daily bread. So in terms of what you eat, in terms of your daily bread, what are you believing God for? See, are you believing God just to eat at McDonald's? Or are you believing God to eat the best of the land? See, what, what are you believing God for? What are you expecting? When you pray, what do you have in mind? What are you picturing? What are you envisioning? In 2019, lift up your eyes. In 2019, believe God for more. Get specific. What specific things are you believing God for? When we were little, my sister and I, every Sunday after church, you know, and you're a kid, you just want to eat and go home, not take a nap, watch TV, whatever. But Sunday after Sunday after church, my parents would take us to look at homes. And I, I just thought that was the most boring, awful thing in the world as a, as a young guy. But they were taking us to look at homes so they could lift up their eyes. And so as a married couple, they could picture and envision and know what did they want for their next home. And in doing that, I had an idea, and then I think my father regretted it, taking us to look at homes, because I said, well, I'd like to have a home where I could walk out the back door and go fishing. Well, that gets, a, that gets expensive quick. The point is to be specific and to know what you want. And how do you know what you want if you don't check anything out? How do you know what you want if you're not aware of what's out there? That's part of why when we have a ladies retreat or a married couples retreat, we go nice places. It's to 
help the people of God lift up their eyes and believe God for more. You know, there, you don't have to stay at an all-inclusive all, all where they ring the bell and people act nuts. Be specific. Lift up your eyes. What specifically are you believing God for? And then one day my dad was golfing, and some of you have heard him tell the story. He saw by the Holy Spirit and his spirit, he saw himself driving down a particular street. And God did a miracle, and it was the home, the kind of home, just like what they wanted and were believing God for, and it backed up to water, and I could walk out whenever I wanted, which wasn't often, and go fishing. So get specific. The language of the Holy Spirit is visions and dreams. Use your thought life for good. Use the power of your imagination. The reality is Sunday night, most, many Christians in America were at home watching garbage. And then we wonder why there's not revival in America. Use your thought life for good. Use, the, use your imagination and the powers of your imagination for good. A few years ago, my father started taking Jessica and I to look at homes. I didn't want to go. Looking means spending money. How do you not spend money? You stay at home. You don't go to the mall. You don't go to the car dealership. You change the Amazon password. And then don't tell your wife. Please forgive me, Jessica. You know, if you today said, hey, Austin, come down to the Ford dealership. They got a brand new Raptor or Shelby. I would say, get behind me, Satan. <laughs> if you don't go, you don't see, can't spend any money. But my father took Jessica and I to start looking at homes. We were out of space. More children were on the way. We needed a bigger home. Well, how do you know what you want and what you want to do if you don't know what's out there, if you don't know what's available? You got to get specific with God. You got to get specific in what you're believing God for. Lift up your eyes. Believe him for more. I would encourage you to read David Young E. Cho's book, The Fourth Dimension. And there's editions that have both volumes, but the, the key thing to read is volume one. The Fourth Dimension, volume one. And as a young man, I read The Fourth Dimension. Cho was a poor pastor in war-ravaged South Korea. And all he was believing God for was a desk, a chair, and a bicycle. And he prayed. And even though this was a small request, his prayer went unanswered. Lord, all I need, he, he was a pastor, little church, basically him, his wife, their children, and his wife's mother. In the early days, five people. Lord, all I need is a desk, a chair, and a bicycle. And his prayer request went unanswered. And he went to the Lord about it. And the Holy Spirit told him, he said, my son, I heard your prayer a long time ago. So Cho said, then where is my desk, my chair, and my bicycle? And the Holy Spirit told him, that is the problem with you and with all my children. You beg me, they beg me, demanding every kind of request, but they ask in such vague terms, I can't answer. Don't you know there are dozens of kinds of desks, chairs, and bicycles? You've simply asked me for a desk, a chair, and a bicycle. You never ordered a specific desk, chair, or bicycle. And young people, you might get to a point, ask your parents for a phone. Well, if you don't specify what phone you want, you might get one from like 1955. That's a lot cheaper than the new iPhone. Oh, they would never do that. I'm, I'm giving some of them ideas right now. <laughs> Looking at stuff you shouldn't on it too long, just get them one from 30 years ago. Problem solved. Though they won't know what to do with the cord. <laughs> and so the Lord dealt with Cho about being specific when he prayed. What kind of desk? What kind of chair? What kind of bicycle? When you pray, be specific. And that's that Sunday morning that young man approached me. That is what I was trying to help him with. What kind of car do you want? Let's be specific. If we're going to pray, if we're going to be in agreement, and we can't pray and be in agreement unless you know what you want 
and I know what you want so we can pray and be in agreement. So whatever you're believing God for, maybe you're believing God for a car. What specific kind of car are you believing for? You know, there's a big difference between a two-door sports car like a Corvette and a minivan. What specific kind of car are you believing for? What specific house are you believing for? Well, Lord, any house will do. Well, do you want a house with plumbing? <laughs> My father talked about, you know, the outhouse. The other night, do you want a house with an outhouse? And there, there are some homes that have been so abused, you might as well live in an outhouse. Do you want used? Do you want new? Do you want two stories, one story? How many bedrooms do you want? How many bathrooms do you want? Does everybody in your family want to share a bathroom till the day they go to be with the Lord? You got to be specific. What kind of home do you desire? What kind of home, specific home are you believing for? What specific kind of job are you believing for? And you young people, what specific kind of house are you believing for? Cho tells the story how a, a lady in the church came to him as the church grew. And she had prayed and believed God for a husband. The Lord's not given me a husband. And so he asked her, what kind of husband did you tell the Lord you wanted? What kind of husband did you order? Well, she hadn't gotten specific. So Cho told her to make a list. She made a list. She took it to the Lord. She quickly had a husband. Got to be specific when you pray. You want a tall husband? A short husband? An in-shape husband? An out-of-shape husband? A husband that's smarter than you? Dumber than you? Because <laughs> see, people, we often have in our minds what we want or desire, but we're not specific when we pray. Then the prayer is unanswered. Then we get impatient with the Lord. Then we just accept and settle whatever life sends our way. And that's why there are second generation and third generation Christians and they're living at a lesser level than their parents. And this really grieves my wife Jessica because from her perspective growing up in the church and hearing my father preach all those years, she always wanted more. And so she doesn't understand young people making decisions and settling for things in life including spouses where they will have a life that is less than what their parents enjoyed. If you're married, how many children are you believing God for? How many boys? How many girls? What will they be like? What will they do with their lives? Be specific. Be specific. You know, there was that old song we used to sing in the 90s. I would need Aaron or Lisa to remind me of how it went. But something to the effect of call them up and tell them what you want. <laughs> Talk about a song that would really anger religious people. Call them up and tell them what you want. But it works. Place your order and be specific. I mean, you, you don't go to Chipotle and say, just give me whatever. <laughs> Do you? And there are people, and they, when they see them walk in at Chipotle, they probably wish they would go somewhere else because they're too specific. Be specific when you pray. Faith is the substance of things hope for. Faith is the substance. Faith is made up of the specific things you hope for and desire. So what specific things are you hoping for or believing for? The NIV, Mark eleven twenty four 24 says, therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Now, Jesus is not telling us to just pray for whatever. You know, like the young people, when they're being sarcastic or rolling their eyes, they'll say, whatever. This is not what Jesus is trying to communicate here. He's not telling us to just pray for whatever, as in, well, Lord, just bless me with whatever. Just bless me with whatever you think would be great. Just do what whatever your will is. If that is your attitude and you pray like that, you'll end up just settling for whatever in life. 
And I gave the, the husband or wife example. You young people, you got to decide what you want. Make a list. That way, as people come and go, you'll know if they match your list. I mean, if you have on your list, young ladies, highly driven, success motivated, and if some guy shows up, lurch, and he's got Cheez-Its crumbs on his outfit, you'll know, oh, I shouldn't date him. I shouldn't fall in love with him because he doesn't match my list. And if you tell the Lord, well, I'd like a four-door sedan, new, black, pinstriping, Cadillac, whatever. Well, if somebody shows up with a car from the 70s, pink, that 25 dogs had been in, you know that's not an answer to your prayer. Be specific. Call them up and tell them what you want. <laughs> they don't make songs like that anymore. They're singing about oceans, whales. I like the old stuff better. <laughs> Call them up. Tell them what you want. What are you doing, Austin? Well, young people are seeing the oceans. I'm calling them up and I'm telling them what I want. <laughs> Far too many believers settle for less than God's best. Would you go to any restaurant and say, just bring me whatever? McDonald's, give me whatever. In and out bird, just, just give me whatever. You go to these nice places. You say, Get, bring me whatever. Bring me the special. Brace yourself. It'll be like this small, or it'll be something really disgusting. <laughs> God's will is that we have the best, His best, but we have to do our part. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. So Jesus is telling us that we can ask for any specific thing we might want or desire in line with the Word of God, and if we ask for it specifically and believe we receive it, it will be ours. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. In the NASB, which is a more literal, literal translation, it says, therefore I say to you, all things, all things for which you pray and ask, believe that you have received them and they will be granted unto you. All things, all things, all things, all specific things you want or desire. And if you ask for it specifically and believe you receive it, you'll have it. We will receive all that we ask for in faith, standing on the Word of God. All things for which you pray and ask, you will receive them. So Jesus is telling us that if we, that we will receive all we ask for, if we will ask in faith, believing we receive. Probably because of my father. His father was a Ford dealer, so he's always loved cars. I grew up loving cars. So because of my father, I've never had trouble believing God for a car. Psalm 37, 4 says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you, what will he give you? So again, you got to get rid of any religious thinking. Well, God, God wants to meet our needs, not our wants or desires. That's garbage. What things soever you desire, not what things soever your, your former pastor desires for you, not what things soever your, your least favorite relative desires for you. What things soever who desires? And if you have a desire that's a good godly desire that doesn't contradict his word, where did that desire come from? It come from Satan? No, it came from the Lord. What things soever you desire? Psalm 37, 4, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of whose heart? Your heart. So what is the specific desire of your heart? What are the specific desires of your heart? When I was a young man in junior high and high school, when the, the conversation about cars came up, and even since then, I would get a brochure for whatever I wanted. I would study it. I would know everything about it. I would read the forums online. I still do. It bothers Jessica, what are you doing? <laughs> I, I, now, when they, they added that car configurator function online, and that is awesome. 
See, you know, turn off the porn and spend your time more productively. <laughs> know what you want, know what you desire. When I was in junior high, high school, and the conversation came up about my first car, my father did not have in mind what I had in mind. He may not remember this. He may deny this now. We'll see. <laughs> but what he had in mind was an older used Volvo. Now, now they're all cool, but back then they were, they were like a square box rectangle. <laughs> older, square box, no, no curves, nothing cool looking, slow. Couple gerbils in there powering the engine. <laughs> Heck, you, you're a young man, don't want your young man going fast, right? Well, that is not what I had in mind. Now, people come today and see the blessing today and they just think, man, it, it's always been easy. Pastor just writes a check for whatever he does here at the church personally. That's not the way it was back then. We were just beginning to really walk in the blessing of God. And at the time, BMW had announced that for the first time in a long time, they were going to do a two-seater convertible. I thought, perfect, that's exactly what I want. <laughs> but that is not what my father had in mind. So I had to go to the Lord and pray that God would bless them sufficiently so that I could get what I want. I had to place my specific order. And then to add to the pressure that year, Neiman Marcus in their Christmas catalog, they put that exact car in the exact color I wanted, a special edition. Only a hundred would be made. Well, it came to the house in the mail. I said, Dad, this is what I want. <laughs> Lord, I don't want just that color and that interior. I want this specific car, the Neiman Marcus car. There's only a hundred. Well, then you're talking about the grace of favor because even if my father calls them, there's only a hundred. But I got it. I got it. I got it. You got to be specific. And part of receiving it is envisioning it. That's why Satan does everything he can to corrupt our thought lives. And that's why as Christians, you know, there's a place for entertainment, but we have to make sure that our entertainment is edifying to the Lord. You know, that's why, like, we watch movies, we try and watch old movies because cl they're clean and they can still be serious or action or romance, but it's not like the new stuff. And so our, our thought lives are powerful. And that's why Satan does everything he can through TV, through what we see online, through movies, through music, to corrupt our thought lives. But just as you can use your thought life for evil, you can use your thought life for good. Part of receiving it is envisioning it. Envision the specific thing you want, desire, and have asked for. See yourself driving it. See yourself wearing it. See yourself living in it. See, all those Sundays, my parents drug Christine and I to look at homes. They were lifting up their eyes. They were expanding their horizons. When they, they looked at homes that at that point they could not yet afford, they were picturing themselves there. They were envisioning themselves there. And I know, I know what it's like to go somewhere, like to a car dealership. And depending on how you look or how you're dressed that particular day, they, they can treat you like, you know, they wish you would go away. But my, you've heard my father tell the story, and if you haven't, that they were at seminary in Fort Worth, had nothing. And there was a dealership that had a two-seater red Mercedes SL convertible. And he took my mom just to look at it and just to sit in it. And people might scoff at that and make fun of that, but that's part of lifting up your eyes. You got to see yourself driving it. You got to see yourself there. You got to picture it. You got to envision it. You got to see yourself living in it and having it. You got to see yourself marrying him or her. That is if they're not already married. <laughs> this culture, you always have to clarify now. You got to see yourself birthing and raising those children. I saw that somebody has prepared a nursery in advance. That's wonderful. That is, that is faith. You've got to picture it. You've got to envision it. You've got to see yourself earning the amount of money you desire. And then you've got to act like it. You've got to talk like it. You've got to dress like it at your level. 
See, if you can't take care of with excellence what God has already blessed you with, why should he bless you with more? Because he's a father, he's a good father, and Jesus taught one parable after another on stewardship. So you're believing God for a car, well, well why can't you wash the car you have now? I remember there was a young man, he, he mentioned jokingly that uh, he had driven his truck 100,000 miles and never got the oil changed. I mean, I, I, I nearly like passed out when he said it. And there's a, there's a car I have, it's only got 8,000 miles, it's nine years old. And every six months I take it to get the oil changed, whether it needs it or not. See, that's how Dr. Gene raised me. It gets washed whether it needs it or not. It gets waxed whether it needs it or not. See, you're, you're, you're believing God for to get out of the apartment and get a starter home or to go from a starter home to a nicer home. Well, how are you taking care of what he has already blessed you with? Does it look like a war zone? Years ago, there, there was a young couple just giving us grief about this and about that. And I know better to never do anything on a Sunday afternoon ever under any circumstances. But Jessica and I got invited to something that was at their house. You would think that if you knew people were coming to your house, you would pick up. Or you'd call Ghostbusters and get the evil spirits out. You'd do something. <laughs> and especially if you know like 100 people from FCC are coming over, you better put on a, your best effort show. It was like a war zone. It was frightening. The grass in their front yard was about this tall. I felt like we needed to call Indiana Jones in to get to the front door. Inside, it was like a disaster zone. Toys everywhere, soiled carpet. It looked like the, that the kitchen needed to be featured on Hell's Kitchen or Kitchen Nightmares. There was stuff growing, but it wasn't one of those organic gardens. <laughs> so we just got to deal with the real. I mean, my father, people get mad, talk about, you know, is, are you missing hubcaps? Do you collect the insurance money and then get duct taped to, to reattach the bumper to your car? See, people laugh or people get offended, but these are principles that'll help you rise from where you're at now, where you're at now to new levels. I mean, if, if my dad and I decided to trade a car in today, get a new car, any dealership in the Metroplex, when they see our last name, they'll give us a price sight unseen. Because they know how we take care of our belongings. And if I say, well, all there is is just a little mark here, they believe me. Whereas when most people say, well, there's just a little mark, it, it looks like the car went through a war zone. <laughs> so part of receiving it is envisioning it. See yourself earning the amount of money you desire. At I-30, the last building, when we were raising money for this building, one thing we raised money for was the chairs, which you're sitting and enjoying right now. And my father encouraged everyone to give the money for a chair for them, each of their family members, and one visitor. And, and I'd have to ask Jessica, hopefully we were engaged when I did this, otherwise it'd probably be inappropriate. But I, I got up and talked about how I was giving the money for Jessica and I, and a visitor, and then five chairs for five children in the future. And I remember, man, you, you know, I was young, I was a lot younger then, Adults rolling their eyes. Well, we believe in faith, but not that much. <laughs> but my, my father said, give, it, give the money for a chair for yourself, everybody in your family. And I thought, well, it's going to be me and Jessica and five kids, so I, I need to cover the basis. I wish I had given money for more chairs. Sometimes you just have to be crazy in faith. In an age of doubt and unbelief, be the man or woman who has faith in God. Jesus said in Luke 18 and verse 8, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? 2 Chronicles 16 and verse 9, you can read the whole account about Asa, 
But the Lord said, the eyes of the Lord range to and fro throughout the whole earth to strengthen the hearts of those fully committed to him. 100% sold out, 100% dedicated, or as some of the men in the church say, all in. Not half-hearted, all in. Number six, when you pray, believe you receive. When you pray, believe you receive. This is true no matter what type of prayer you may be praying. When you pray, at the moment you pray, believe you receive. If you don't believe you receive, if you pray not believing you receive, then you are not praying in faith. Remember, God responds to faith, and God honors and confirms his word. He honors and confirms our faith, and faith is the currency of the kingdom. Mark eleven twenty four. 24, I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. When you pray, not after you pray, not, not when you can go to enough church services to get enough faith to believe you receive. When you pray, at the moment you pray, believe you receive. What is our part? What is our job in prayer? Our part is to believe we receive. Our job is to believe we receive. And this is true no matter what type of prayer you may be praying. You know, there, there are people and they spend a lot of time praying in the Spirit. Well, if you're not praying in the Spirit, believing you receive, you're wasting your time. If you're not praying in the Spirit, believing you receive that something good is happening, you're wasting your time. No matter what type of prayer you pray, when you pray, believe you receive. Believe you receive when you pray. When you pray, pray, believing you receive. Pray, believing you receive. We could say it this way. Believe you receive as you pray. If you're going to get anything from God, you have to pray in faith. And to pray in faith, you have to believe you receive when you pray. And that's going to translate into how you act and talk. And that's why, as I said yesterday, we, we ought to be happy. We ought to be joyful because if I've gone to my heavenly father and he's heard me and he's answered me and I believe I have received what I asked for, what, what should I be sad about? What should I be worried about? What should I be depressed about? Well, wh why should I get on Facebook and say, all right, I need everybody to encourage me today. Believe you receive when you pray. This is one reason why so many don't get answers to prayer. They don't believe they receive. In fact, they pray thinking they won't receive. They've been taught. They probably won't receive anything. But pray because that's what a good religious person does. You'll probably get the, the stoplight, maybe a yellow, probably nothing. But we're religious, so pray even though nothing's going to happen. They've been taught that. Some people pray believing they won't receive. They pray believing they will never receive. They pray doubting God. One indication you don't believe you receive is when you're trying, you're willing to try everything but prayer. One indication you're not walking in faith and you don't believe you receive is when you're willing to try everything but prayer. God should be our first resort, not our last resort. One indication you don't believe you receive is when prayer is the last resort, not the first solution. You know, when Jessica and I had just had Sophie, that was a miracle. Don't have time to talk, tell the whole story. So we, we finally have Sophie. She finally passed all the checks at the hospital, finally have her. Well, then they were making us go see the, the pediatrician repeatedly, ridiculous. You know, Jessica's feeding her. What's the problem? The baby's growing. Leave us alone. But we, we went to this pediatrician in Mansfield, and we're, we're there in the office, think it's just going to be a weight check. Then she tells us some term about Sophie's, Sophie's head, which, you know, you should never Google what the doctor tells you. You know, don't Google spider bite. And so I Googled this, and, you know, these horrific pictures. And I, and I just thought, this cannot be. 
But the first thing we did was take her to my father and pray the prayer of faith and agreement. Prayer should be the first resort, not the last resort. And of course, that, that doctor was a moron because I later read on Wikipedia, which isn't a good source, that only one out of like however many tens of thousands of children even have this. I called the office. Their, her secretary was dumb enough to tell me they recommend and say that most kids have that. It's a, it was a money-making scheme. But see, people go and they hear and they believe that over the Word of God. And then they, they go and do the procedures and all that they recommend and spend the money and do all of that instead of praying and going to God. If you don't believe you receive when you pray, then you are praying in doubt and unbelief. Turn over to James, 5, James chapter 1, beginning in verse 5. If any of you lacks wisdom, we could say it this way, we all need more wisdom. Amen? Amen? None of us have, we all need more wisdom. And the more I read, the more I learn, I realize the less I know. We're reading, we're studying all the time to learn more. We need wisdom. If any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to him. Verse 6, but when, 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 at the moment, when he asks, when he prays, he must believe and not doubt, because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That man should not think he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all he does. So verse 6, when you ask, at the moment you ask, when you pray, at the moment you pray, believe and do not doubt. Believe and do not doubt. Why don't we say that? Say believe, believe. and do not doubt. Do not doubt. Tell your neighbor, say believe, believe. and do not, do not doubt. When he asks, he must believe and not doubt. That man... What man? The man who doubts when he prays. See, if when you pray you're doubting, you got to get in the Word. More Word, less doubt. More Word, less unbelief. More Word, more faith. And again, there's a time and there's a place for entertainment, but if you're in the, the fight of faith, you got to get to the place where you believe, you receive when you pray, where you're praying, believing you receive, not in doubt, not in unbelief, not as the last resort, not as a Hail Mary. When you pray, believe and do not doubt. Pray, believing you receive. Remember Jesus said in Matthew 9, 29, according to your faith will it be done unto you. According to whose faith? Our faith, according to my faith, according to your faith. So if I don't like the results currently in my life, whose fault is it? I know it's Jessica's fault. You know, Julia's back there. I know it's her fault. If I could only have more sleep, I'm going to get in trouble for saying that. <laughs> Jessica's the one who needs more sleep. If we could only have more sleep, everything would be, right? Right? You got to give up the excuse making. You got to give it according to whose faith? Your faith, my faith. And so if we don't like what we're experiencing, who needs to do something about it? We do. Amen. Doubt, fear, anxiety, worry, unbelief, they are faith in the negative. And either way, positive or negative, you will receive. And you will receive whatever it is you believe. Nothing ever goes my way. According to your faith, will it be done unto you? God's not doing, well, they read all those miracles on Sunday. Nothing's happened in my life. According to your faith, will it be done unto you? I'll probably never find a man. According to your faith, will it be done unto you? I'll probably never drive a new car. According to your faith, will it be done unto you? Lift up your eyes, believe for more. Believing you receive is one way we put God in remembrance. Isaiah 43 and verse 26 we read yesterday. Put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. State your case. Argue your case. 
present your case. Declare thou that thou may be justified. Believing you receive is one way we put God in remembrance. You've prayed, you've asked. Now say, Heavenly Father, I put you in remembrance that I believe I receive. In February, two Wednesday nights, as an illustration, I, I dealt with believing in money above and beyond. Once you ask or confess or declare, what do you then do from that point forward? You just believe you receive. Because to ask again is contrary to faith. So I handle business on the, the first day of the month, then the rest of the month, what am I doing? I'm believing I receive. Believe you receive. And that's one way we put him in remembrance. When you pray, at the moment you pray, and until you receive the physical manifestation, you must believe you receive. What do I do after I've prayed? What do I do till the answer comes? Believe you receive. Believe you receive. Believe you receive. Austin, I've prayed. I've asked, what do I do now? Believe you receive until you have the physical manifestation. Believe you receive until you have that husband or wife, until you have that child. Believe you receive until you have that job or whatever it is you're believing God for. Believe you receive until the answer shows up. We didn't end up here at 287 overnight. It took time, it took, a it took action. It took confession, it took faith. It took a lot of believing we receive. You know, you've heard my father say that when we authorized everything, that was crazy faith. Authorized the second floor and the third floor and all the concrete and the playgrounds. Crazy faith. But what was he doing to stand up and preach the word of God every Sunday without crying, without saying, well, what are we going to do if all the money doesn't come in? How was pastor acting? How was he conducting himself. He was believing he received. I used Michaela yesterday as an example. It took time, but every day we just kept believing we receive. I mentioned money. You confess in above and beyond. You pray, you ask, or you get beyond that and just say what you want. You call them up, tell them what you want. <laughs> From that point forward, you believe you receive until you have it. You know, some people might wonder, you know, with the 11 a.m. service in this culture, you know, people have a, a reluctance to want to be doers of the word. I don't get discouraged. I just keep being faithful every week. I just keep praying, studying, obeying, and I just keep believing I receive. As I mentioned a few Sundays ago with our new home, there were some challenges and some people didn't do right by us but we just kept believing we receive. And on anything stolen, we just kept believing we receive sevenfold. And one way or another, God takes care of it and it all comes in. We moved in, got the first tax bill, and it was way less than what we thought it would be. Government is incompetent, but they are not that incompetent. It was a miracle of God. And they can only raise that so much every year. So what was God doing? A miracle to make up to us for what other people had done wrong. Amen. People come to do things. What will that be? No charge. I mentioned a few Sundays ago how on our, our front door, one of the windows fogged up. I called, need to get this taken care of. They said, well, Mr. Lingerfeld, it's out of warranty, but we're going to come and we're going to do it all. We're going to replace it. And we're not going to charge you anything for it. See, that's the kind of stuff that happens when every day you wake up happy and joyful and just believe you receive. Amen. We had a man come to the house to do some work, get things touched up outside, but then he also did a lot of work that was punch list related that somebody else should have taken care of. And I, man, I knew, man, that bill was going to be a big bill. So I was praying, I was confessing, I was believing I received, the money was coming in. And then I got the bill, and it was way less than what I thought it would be. Well, this is what happens when you believe you receive. If your answer hasn't arrived yet, don't be discouraged. Satan wants you to be discouraged. He wants your joy to become despair. He wants your faith to become doubt and unbelief. Don't be discouraged. Just keep believing you receive. What do I do on Monday, on Tuesday, on Wednesday, on Thursday, on Friday? Believe you receive. 
And what if it doesn't happen this week? Just keep believing you receive. Just keep saying, I receive it in Jesus' name. You've got to discipline yourself to act like you believe you have received. To talk like you believe you have received. Not believing you receive is contrary to faith. Believing you have not and will not receive is contrary to faith. Further, if you truly believe you receive, you don't need to ask more than once. He's not like your grandmother. He is not hard of hearing. Ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe you receive them and you shall have them. So we ask, we pray in faith. And at the moment you pray, when you pray, you believe you receive it, and you shall what? So do I need to ask again if I have it? Do I need to ask again if it's on the way? If my heavenly Father has heard me and has answered me, do I need to walk around sad and depressed and, and, and look real sad so everybody asks, how am I doing? No, because I believe I receive. And if you believe you receive, you shall have it. Not might, no, not maybe, not five times out of 10, you shall have it. If it will be mine, I have it. I don't need to ask again. I just need to believe I receive. This is why our confession is so important. This is why God changed Abram and Sarah's, Sarai's names. His name originally was Abram, which means exalted father, but God changed it to Abraham which means father of a multitude or many nations. His wife's name, Sarai, meant princess. God changed her name to Sarah, which means queen of princes, plural. Mother of princes, plural. This is why God changed Jacob's name. His name, Jacob, meant supplanter, deceiver. God changed his name to Israel, which means prince of God. One who has prevailed with God, and this is my favorite, one who has power with God. He wrestled and did not let go. See, when you believe you receive on Monday and believe you receive on Tuesday and believe you receive on Wednesday and on Thursday and on Friday, and until the answer comes and until you have whatever it is you've asked for or are believing for, you're like Jacob. You're holding on and you're not letting go until you have what is yours and what belongs to you. And that's the kind of man or woman that has power with God. If you truly believe you receive, don't ask more than once. Ask one time. To ask again and again and again is contrary to faith. To ask again and again and again means you don't believe you receive. To ask again and again and again means you're not praying in light of the new covenant. You don't believe you're good enough you don't believe you're qualified enough, you don't believe you're worthy enough, you believe you're out there in that outer court or you're at Mount Sinai, not at Mount Zion. To ask again and again and again means you don't believe he heard you and he answered you. When all the time he did and if you would just believe you receive, it would only be a matter of time until you would have what rightfully belongs to you. Bow your heads. Just begin wherever you're seated, begin to pray in the Spirit. The Bible says that little, little foxes spoil the vines. He loves us. He loves us. You saw last night, pastor listening and dealing with things that weren't in his notes today. The first point, it wasn't in my notes till this morning. He loves you. He wants you to have the desire of your heart. He wants you to have whatever it is you desire, whatever it is you want, whatever it is you've asked for, whatever it is you have believed him for. So let's take this few minutes we have together Get, get that down in your heart. 
believe that. And maybe if you've been in doubt and unbelief, maybe if you have not been believing you have received, just, just take these few minutes we have to tell him that you, you missed it, you didn't know better, you, you missed it, you ask his forgiveness, you ask his forgiveness for being in doubt, you ask his forgiveness for being in unbelief. As pastor said last night, you, you ask his forgiveness for baptizing that, that dream, that prayer request in doubt and unbelief. So, so do that. And then just begin to lift your hands and begin to thank him. Thank him for whatever it is you desire. Thank him for whatever it is you're believing him for. Thank him for the desire of your heart. Thank him that he has heard you. Thank him that he has answered you. Thank him that the, the answer is on the way. He, he's not going to answer. He has answered. The answer is on the way. He, you're not going to receive. You receive now. You believe you receive now. You, you have it. You have it now. You have it now by faith. He's heard you. He, he has answered you. It's yours. It, it belongs to you. It has, it has your, your name on it. Hallelujah. 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 We praise you. We magnify you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just, just begin to lift your hands and thank him. Hallelujah. We thank you. We praise you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's okay, it's okay to be a little vocal. His presence is here. His anointing is here. His power is here. There's no better time than right now to believe you receive. You might be here this morning and maybe there's sickness of some kind in your body. Re reach out your hand by faith now. Take it by faith and believe you receive it. As I mentioned yesterday, picture, envision yourself being well, well, well in your body. Picture that, that issue, whatever it is, being gone, being permanently gone. Say this, say, I believe, I receive now in Jesus' name. Then do that again, but then insert whatever it is you're believing for. Now, last night, Pastor ministered on corresponding action. So today's message, believe you receive. If you believe you receive, you got to act like it. You got to talk like it. You got to give up the lack of joy. You got to give up the despair, the gloom. You got to give up this thing of wanting people to have a pity party for you. You got to go out of here and act like you have whatever it is you ask for. And even if you don't have the physical manifestation yet, he's heard you, he's answered you, it is on the way. It is on the way as much as UPS or FedEx are on the way to your house, just that the Lord is always on time. Amen. It's on the way. It's on the way. It's on the way. If you believe you receive, you got that heavenly tracking number, amen? And the angel of the Lord are bringing it to you. So as R.W. Schambach used to say, we don't have any trouble. All we need is faith in God. Amen. Amen.